This is called slip corking. First, I'll talk about my rod and reel. This is a 10-foot rod. We use anywhere from 10 to 8-foot rod. This here is around about a predator here. And as you see, it's not the newest reel of all, but it still works. Also, I use a medium action reel that I use on here, and it's, it's, it's been through a few fish itself. So, and my test line that I use on here is 17 pound test is what I use on here. And all I do to start off with, I don't have nothing on here to start off, nothing. The first thing you want to do is put on a barber stopper. That's what we call a slip knot. And it's real simple. All you do is take your line and you run it through just like that. You pull that through, you pull the red off, put it down, and you pull these strings right here together, just like that, till you get them tight. Once you get it tight, I kind of test it and see how tight it is. Cause the reason for having it tight, if you start catching these fish in about five foot of water, you want to stay at five foot. You don't want it to slide and move by itself. You want to be able to move it. So once you get it where you want it, then you want to clip these extra pieces. So I always keep a pair of scissors or a knife with me. And I clip off the extra, just like that. I leave a little bit on there to pull, cause sometimes it'll come loose or it'll loosen up a little bit. So if you pull on one of these, it'll tighten it right back up. So first we got a slip knot and now we need something to keep that, this cork from going through that slip knot and that's what we use, that's when we use a bead. I have beads here and all I do is I slide my bead on next on my line, just like that. Then you take your slip cork and you take what we call the pretty end, you run it through first. That first eye from the top, first eye to the back eye, just like that. Got that on just like that. Now we need something to stand that cork up because it ain't gonna stand up by itself. So what we do, we take a weight. I use a slip weight or what they call an egg weight. This is a 3 8 ounce weight. Usually it'll stand this cork right up. So what we do is we slide the weight on. Next. Just like that. And then we need something to keep all of this on. So what I do is, I cut me a little leader line off, because I'm going to use this other end. So I take my scissors and I cut the leader line off like that, and then I tie a swivel on. You can use any kind of swivel. The main thing you want to do is hold this. This knot is just a regular knot. I call it a CJ's knot. Just twist it about five or six times. You run your line through there, through that loop, if I can get it, yep, and then you wet it, and then you pull it, cinch it down, just like that. That holds all of this on, just like that. Now you need something to put your hook on. That line that we cut off earlier, that's it right there, that's a leader line. I tie it on the other end. Take it like that. And I twist it, same way, same knot, CJ's knot, five or six times. Run it through this eye. If I can get it right there. Run it through just like that. Wet it. Pull it. You have a leader line, and you want that leader line to be about eight to ten inches. So I'm gonna cut some of this off. And I take my hook. It's a number four treble hook. It's what I'm using today. I use anywhere from eight, six to four. The reason I have these different size hooks, cause sometimes them fish don't take that big hook. It could be a big fish, but sometimes he just won't take that big hook. So sometimes I'll leave, I keep smaller hooks in there just in case. 
but today we're using number four. So I'm gonna tie that four on like this, same knot. That CJ's knot. You can see it right here, I twist about seven, six or seven times. Take that, loop it through, wet it. So right here, you got your slip knot, barber stopper, that slides, that you can adjust the depth how you want to fish. You can fish five foot, 10 foot, it doesn't matter. As long as you got that knot, that knot will go all the way into the reel and also into the rod. I mean, go into the rod and also into the reel. So it won't get hung up. You got your bead, you got your cart, your weight, your swivel, and your hook. Now you're ready to fish. Now the difference between this punch bait and sponge bait or dip bait is all you need is a treble hook. You never have to touch it with your hand. You just punch it off in there, pull it out with an angle, and it's on there. You never touch it, so you use a stick with this the same way, but you never have to touch this bait.